Dutch ship to Holland. Okay, we've now de we've now entered the Boer War. What's this? Oh, this is like a blockhouse, maybe. Oh, look at this. Oh, the blockhouse. So we know some of them. These are these are called rice blockhouses. They're the corrugated iron ones. It says throughout the uh, a total of eight thousand blockhouses were built. Average cost of eight hundred to a thousand pound each. And uh, there's one, there's another variation, it's got the corrugator, that might be a rice. Uh, but the ones we've seen have been brick, haven't they? That's a good uh, little display, isn't it? Oh, there's a lot, there's a lot going on here. Oh, here's some goodies. Help, help my car. And the road that I came down from um, Johannesburg was probably the route that Buller, Redford's Buller column advanced upwards because there were battles all along that road at um, Fox Rust. Uh, there's a blockhouse. Bits and pieces they found. Bullets, buttons. And it's a relief of Maggie Blakesmith. A bit of bling and merchandise produced um, when they relieved Ladysmith. There's one of those chocolate tins. Okay, so General Penn Simmons, I guess he's in the um, in the graveyard back there. We'll go and have a look at him. So the war was declared uh, was about the 18th of October or something and uh, by the 22nd of October, that's sort of a week afterwards, the town was occupied by the Boers, remained under the Boer control until the 15th of May. Jeez, that's a long time. Dundee surrendered to the Boers on the 23rd, camp overrun by Boers who behaved well. 1,500 men went whooping through the streets and behaving in an undisciplined manner. We plundered shops and dwelling houses and considerable damage. On the 24th, the funeral for General Penn Simmons. Okay. Oh, General Jabur was here in February. Okay, so once um, Ladysmith was relieved, then Dundee would have been in danger as well. So they probably saw the what was coming. So they probably retired in an orderly fashion. Scottish horse, we know about them. This is fantastic, isn't it? Elands Lachter. Now we want to go up there next. Elands Lachter is a train station. It's got a fascinating um, story. Was a decisive British victory where the actual British cavalry for once were able to deploy and um, uh, hit the uh, Boers. Here we go, this is uh, General Penn Simmons, the commanding officer of the British forces. Penn Simmons died as a result of wounds sustained during the Battle of Talana. He died at 3.30 pm, a few hours after the Boer occupation of Dundee, buried at St James Church in a simple service. So maybe he's married, buried at the church. There's the church there. I think um, we can go part way up the uh, hill where the Battle of Talana took place. Look at that. Reverend Bailey conducted the service of General Penn Simmons when he died a year later. He was buried not far from the General in St. James Churchyard. He remained in Dundee. Uh, on the 15th of May 1900, when his gardener told him the approach of the British troops, he unearthed a flag which he had buried under the church form and flew it from a branch to welcome the British troops back to Dundee. 
and that's General Pen Simmons there. Okay, gotta stop and check this. Look at that sword. Look at that old Lee Enfield, Adelaide Farm, 1984. Wow, that's a bit from the Hussars, Adelaide Farm. Don't know where that is. I'm going to stop and sit down for a moment. Look at all this good stuff. Found on Talana Battlefield. Oh, look at that. War declared. Boers commence hostilities. There's Boerta. What was Boerta we saw that uh, in that hotel room up at the Val Hotel a couple of days ago. Look at that magnificent bayonet. Let's stop and have a little rest here. <clears throat> I should have brought a drink with me. I've just been sitting on this lovely bench in here. It's nice and cool. And reading about the Battle of Talana, oh, the Battle of Talana, which is essentially Dundee. I think Talana is the hill uh, behind the museum and uh, the hill where um, my little Kwakunja village is um, at the base of. Um, it was an all-day affair. Um, there's a lot to take in if you want to know about it. Um, you know, read the Battle of Talana. Essentially, the Boers got uh, arrived. They got on top of the mountain. They started shelling this, the town, and then um, the British drove them off the top of the hill. Sort of a stalemate, I think. Look at that. Uh, but the result was, um, yeah, General Penn Simmons was killed, mortally wounded. Uh, it's an enlarged version of the Natal witness. Hmm, lantern slides. Those are fantastic. That's the Lancers. If we get up to Ireland's Lachter, we'll see where the Lancers were uh, employed against the Boers actually made contact. These look like things that were found around here. Bits and pieces of old pipe. Look at the um, stitching on that. That could be a Hussar's outfit. Well, I've, um, I've only explored. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is the concentration camps. We went to that one at Balmoral. Um, I didn't go to the one in Petersburg. Um, it wasn't safe, apparently. Wackerstrom. Oh, look at this. Wow. <clears throat> this is the heavy duty uh, Mausers, I think. Uh, shells, there's bullets, there's round shot. Lots of shells. There's a bandolier at the back there. Cordite in the cartridges. Don't really understand cordite. I think I asked Alan. I can't remember what he said. It was buried under a Boer farmhouse. It was found in the 1980s when someone was renovating the house. Look at this. Leather hat and cap. There he is, Jan Luntman. He was with the party that captured Winston Churchill. He fought alongside Louis Buerta. He must have been a local man. Hmm. The story of a woman 
His um, husband went to war and the baby died when he was away, so she put on his clothing and went and fought as a as a Boer woman, as a Boer. And perhaps she, uh, they didn't know she was a woman. Okay. So we've got some outfits here. The heliograph. We've um, we know a bit about. We saw one of those at uh, with Piet. Uh, this is the British khaki. Everything was khaki. Uh, these are vets. Oh, these are all the forts. The sangars. It's a chair. Take on campaign with you. We saw some of the uh, forts at um, or the Sangar, didn't we, at uh, Cannon Copy in the Mafeking. Uh, fort on top of Talana Hill. Oh, I don't think I can get up there. Oh, yeah. oh look at that. I nearly died just going ascending that small copy at the back of um, Diamond Hill there. Oh, look at this. Fantastic. Helmets. You wouldn't think that could provide much protection. Uh, the flap at the back was designed to protect the neck. That's how the name the Roy Neck came about. Was the British got burnt on the back of their necks. Those are the cigarette cards with the generals and the there yeah, see um that's the words and music to um the beggar, what was it called? You know that Rudy Kipling song. Uh simple minded beggar I think it is. Okay. There's a bandolier. The Foreign Service Sun Helmet uh, cloth covered cork, dyed khaki, universal British issue. Right. There it is again, the absent minded beggar. There's a beautiful couple of swords, aren't they? Magnificent, I love one of them. There's all those tins of chocolates that uh, Queen Victoria sent the troops. As I said in another episode, you can still buy them on eBay. Sometimes you still get the chocolate in them. I think Alan said he had one with the chocolate still in it. So uh, by May, the British had returned to Dundee and the boys were in full retreat and decided that they couldn't hold back the tide of the of Buller's um, relief force, which was always being reinforced and... This is great, isn't it? There's some nurses who came out to work. And it's just a quotation there about the flies. They were trying to operate on the guys and um, there were flies. There's an Australian field ambulance. Hello, love. How was it? I can tell you it was hot. And it was hard work. Oh, there's a fella there. How are you holding up, fella? Oh, I'll be right. I'll be back home and I'll be I'll be at them boys. You give me off a chance and I'll I'll be I'll be back at it. Thank you for your service, sir. And madam. Oh, that's all right. It's a living. Oh, look, some toy soldiers. Wow. Oh yeah, so this is, um, and we're going to go over to Elan's Lachter and I'll read out to you this story, but there were foreign regiments or foreign units uh, fighting with the Boers over at Elan's Lachter, some Dutch, some Irish. The Dutch didn't perform well, but of interest was uh, Vincent van Gogh's brother was with a Dutch unit fighting with the Boers. Oh, this is the Boer prisoners of, camp, uh, prisoners of war. Oh, look at that beautiful stain and Kruger. Beautiful old 
prints. Yeah. So now we're leaving. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Got a bit of sunlight again. I love these old last shot at cleanser. Save the guns. Freddie said, save the guns. Yes, um, so Redvers, Natal Field Forces. You know, those are all the um, engagements that Redvers Bullers Forces had, and it's almost every day. They might have a couple of days off here and there, but almost every day. Here's some of the bling we saw at um, Mafeking, those plates. Robert's entry into Pretoria. Those plates of Baden Powell. Baden Powell. Um, Robert's. Those are the plates. So I've got a couple of those plates at home. I've told you about them. I think you saw them. If you want to see my plates, go to the um, my episode where I talked about what interested me in the Boer War. Now these are souvenir items for the general public to buy. So there is a lot of merchandise out there. So uh, the cost of the war, British forces sent to South Africa. Wow, 365,000. And colonial, 82,000. That's the Australians, the Canadians, the New Zealanders. So that's uh, over... 400,000, that's nearly half a million men, you know, and um, the Boers, well, they're not even 200,000, okay, so after the uh, war ended, the people in Dundee were still to rebuild, you know, a lot of houses had been lost with fire, and what you had was, um, you know, the inevitable, whose side were you on, you know? I guess, for people, it'd be hard to forget. Well, this is a, um, one of these convoy wagons that we saw at Pete's, eh? This is what the British were always trying to protect. Okay. Now what I can't see, Let's have a look if we can see underneath it, because those bits that were at that memorial with that, that had been burnt. Oh, I can't see that big iron bit, which is like the axle. I don't know. What I can tell you is, it's hot in Zululand. I'm going to take a seat. Unless they've got any... Yeah. I mean, I could come back here tomorrow and do it again. I'm a bit disappointed with Pat yesterday. You know, the first thing he says is, you're here for too long. There's nothing to see to occupy you for. So I'm a week in Dundee and a week in um, Ladysmith. Well... That museum, I could only take in 5%. If that, I could go and sit there again. I could get a, a drink. Oh, actually, I don't think you're allowed to bring food or drink here. How are they going to know? I could get a drink and sit there and read stuff. Oh, But um, we'll see how we go. A little disappointed with Kwakunja last night. You know, no food. But the most upsetting thing was the lack of internet. The girls that work there tell me that their internet's okay. When I said I'm with Vodafone, they both uh, they said, ah, yeah, yeah, Vodafone, yes. What they understood. Okay. That's the uh, Talana house. Uh, where the Boer and the Zulu exhibits are. Now this is the coach house. What we want to do now, I'm still wearing my thongs, right? I've got my proper shoes in the car, but this is all grass. 
I don't like. You know, this is a coach house. From the coach house, we need to find the spot where Penn Simmons was mortally wounded. Oh, there's coaches in there. Some of them we know as Cape Carts. It was explained to us by Charles, it wasn't necessarily that they were, um, what was I was going to say, from the Cape. It was just a, a type of cart. But from the Cape, from the coach house, we should be able to find General Penn Simmons' can where he was injured. I think he was shot in the stomach. And he casually said to his Indian stretcher bearer, I think I've been hit. General, what's that? Saw pit. I know, original saw pit. I think if we're going to go look, oh, what's that? Of course. Is there a can? Is that a can? Oh, that's Talana Hill, right? That's where the bulls are on top of that. That's when the British knew they were in trouble. And suddenly boars appeared on the ridge of that hill. So we don't know where the camp was. There was a British camp somewhere down there, probably in Dundee. The boars started lobbing shells into the camp, which made the British not so happy. And um they would have responded by sending men out here under Penn Simmons. Okay. I mean, this isn't a can, surely. This is just a bit of rock that they threw out. map here. Right. Coach house to Glen Penn Simmons can. Okay. Oh. okay, well we saw the sign to the original saw pits. Okay. So were a Zulu ant attacked my foot well, hang on I see it okay I can see the can where Penn Simmons was mortally hit I'll read you a bit about the good general this is the, um, surely the ambition of any Victorian general serving for Her Majesty was to be mortally wounded in combat and to be remembered with memorials. And... There's a bit of a path across to where the old fella lay. Well, he was taken back to camp and he died overnight buried in the church but whether he was reburied uh, in the cemetery here we'll soon find out because we'll go there next and then I'll find out if we can um, find out if I can um, I think it'd be nice to come back with a sandwich and some and a drink, you know. If I'm gonna try and attempt to climb some of that hill, 
good to have a cold drink with me, but I think I saw a sign saying no food. drink allowed. We bought the sun cream today too because yeah cold wet weather of South Africa has been swept away and we're, we're returned to um, the heat. I just rang the Rourke's Drift Hotel. I've got four nights I need somewhere to stay because Kwakunja and accommodate me for those nights and I'm okay with that. So the Rock's Drift Hotel is right, a beautiful spot, right in the battlefields on the Buffalo River. Uh, Chris from uh, Red Coat British History on YouTube, he's got a great channel, he turned me on to some of these things. Actually Chris did a episode on the Battle of Talana Hill. Um, you can find him on YouTube. Yeah, he's been he's been a great help, but um, he said mention his name when you ring the Rock's Drift. It's going to be, it's not cheap. Uh, I'm going to say about three or four hundred a night, but that includes meals. But of course, there's a swing pool. And it's a real nice place. You know, I'm not going to be here again, and uh, the the fact that you can stay at the Rock's Drift. You know, right in smack bang in the middle of the Zulu War battlefields. Uh, something to be said for that. Anyway, here we are at. The can. William Penn Simmons uh, from Cornwall yeah, he went to Sandhurst that's where they all go if you want a career in the army commissioned to the regiment of foot the South Wales borderers he was a lieutenant in 1866 uh, he fought against Sandile in the Ninth, ninth Frontier War that's probably a Corsa War Anglo-Zulu War of 1879 he was with Chelmsford uh, and he didn't, he wasn't at uh, Isildwana, 1880 to 1898, so that's, uh, what, 18 years he was in India. So a bit of a cushy job there. And then in 1899, May, he came to Natal to take, uh, they probably knew war was coming, so he came back to uh, help out with preparations for war with the Boers. Uh, on the outbreak of war, the 11th of October, Simmons remained in command of the advanced British position in Dundee with him were four battalions of infantry. And here we go, here's the nitty gritty now. In an attempt to drive the Boers off to Lana Hill, Simmons, riding out a camp and passing through a plantation of eucalyptus tree, climbed over a low stone wall where he was shot in the abdomen. I told you, shot in the stomach. Returned to his horse and galloped off until he was out of sight of his men, then dismounted, was taken by stretcher to hospital. The Boer position on Talana was taken by assault, and while tactically it was a British victory that resulted in many more British than Boer casualties. So though they drove the Boers off the top of the hill, that didn't mean they retook Dundee. The Boers uh, occupied the town. There he is. And there's the can. This is where I wouldn't mind. On this spot, Lieutenant General Sir William Penn Simmons fell mortally wounded. Erected by the Durban Light Infantry. Might be able to get a photo. That's where you need someone with you. Okay, that's great. So yeah, he didn't want his men to know. He thought, I'll oh, just um, 
act as if nothing happened, got shot in the stomach. I'll climb on my horse, give them a bit of a tally-ho, well done chaps. Take the hill, he's pointing up there. He's seeing bulls on the top. Take the hill, he says to his men, drive those bloody bulls off the top of that hill. Well, they started um, pounding it with British artillery. They were aiming just over the ridge to try and get the bulls. But when they finally made their way up there and they were facing some pretty heavy rifle fire, the bulls were already off in the distance on their ponies.